We're joined tonight by Christine Del Negro, a certified EFT practitioner and life coach. Christine, it's a pleasure having you on the show. It's a pleasure to be here. Tell me, what have you done so far for your health and productivity today? I start every day um, with meditation and tapping. And if I have time, I'll do some journaling as well, which I didn't do today. But I did get a workout in and I also went for a walk. It's a nice routine. And since most people have never heard of tapping, we'll dig into that in a second. But first, tell me about your origin story, how you got here, what interested you in tapping to begin with, and go from there. Okay, so um, I found tapping, sometimes people, it can be referred to either as tapping or EFT, emotional freedom technique. Um, And I found it in 2013. I kind of stumbled onto it. I was going through a real rough patch in my life and trying to figure things out. My marriage was um, kind of was pretty rocky and we were trying to figure out um, if we were going to be able to stay together or not. And I had two young children. And so I was just trying to figure out what I wanted in life and who I was. One of the things that I realized at that time was I didn't know what was going to happen with my marriage, but I knew that either way I had to kind of rediscover who I was because I wasn't really happy with the person that I had become. So I kind of started on this, you know, journey of self-discovery as I think a lot of people do when they're in a situation like that. And so that was when I found tapping and I read about it on a blog that I followed and I just thought, okay, I don't, I'm open at this point. It was one of those situations I was willing to try anything. And there's an organization called the Tapping Solution, which is a phenomenal resource for all things tapping. And they um, run an annual summit for about 10 days every, it's usually in February or March. It's a free event and um, you can then purchase the recordings if you want, but that was my first experience with it. And so I, I listened every day for 10 days. They release two interviews each day with different practitioners talking about how they use tapping um, to help their clients around a variety of issues. And so I just, and the way that they structure the interview is you listen to, you know, the conversation and then they, they weave tapping into it on whatever the specific issue is that they're talking about. And so I kind of tapped along. And the first thing that I started to realize was that I almost immediately started sleeping through the night and I had been dealing with a lot of insomnia at that point. So I thought, you know what, I don't care if this does anything else. If it's helping me sleep through the night, then it's going to be a lot easier to, you know, start to figure out the answers to some of these questions. So over time, the more that I tapped, the more I started to see these um, often subtle and sometimes really not so subtle changes just in myself and in the way I carried myself, the way I saw myself. I think before that, I really saw myself as somebody who needed help, who needed support, who was not a strong person and needed to be taken care of. I started to realize as I was going through tapping um, that I was a lot stronger than I had ever given myself credit for, which was a really good thing because my marriage did end up ending and I went through a lot of changes and, you know, not the least of which was helping my daughter's um, transition into a different structure of our family. But because of that confidence that I had gained through tapping, it really, I was able to do it. It wasn't easy, but I believed that I could do it. And so I did. Let's rewind a little bit. And for those that have heard you mentioned tapping and the emotional freedom technique, EFT, what exactly is this? Tapping sounds very broad. And can you break down what the process actually looks like? Sure. Tapping, I call it a a form of active meditation. I think for people, you know, so often when the word meditation comes up, people say, oh, I can't meditate. I can't get my, I can't slow my mind down. I can't, you know, be present. I just, meditation doesn't work for me. If you're one of those people, then I would encourage you to try tapping because tapping has a lot of the same um, characteristics of meditation in terms of the 
the impact on your mind and your body, but it you are literally tapping on acupressure points um, on your hands, your face, and your torso. So it, it's a little weird looking when you see it for the first time, but it relaxes the nervous system and it neutralizes whatever emotions are happening in your body so that you can start to think a little bit more clearly. Um, it also, and we'll probably talk about this a little bit later, one of the biggest aspects of tapping that I think is really important is it starts off with something called a setup statement. And in that statement, you acknowledge whatever the issue is that you're dealing with and accept it, accept the issue and yourself exactly where you are. Just not saying like you're giving up, but just saying like, okay, this is the problem that's in front of me right now this is what I'm dealing with. Cause I think a lot of the time we expend so much energy, just like fighting with reality and being really angry or upset that we're dealing with whatever it is that we're dealing with. And the more you can just kind of accept it and say, all right, this is what I have on my plate. Now let me figure out how I move forward, the better. And so tapping helps because what you do is as you tap on these different points, you talk through whatever is happening in your life and in your mind and your body. And the tapping helps relax the nervous system and just kind of calm down the fight or flight reaction that we go into when we're under stress. And so once that starts to happen, it's a lot easier to be able to think more clearly about whatever it is that's going on and maybe think about it in a different way. Um, and sometimes what happens also is that a memory or a thought will come up and you'll make a connection to whatever you're dealing with in the present to something else that you've dealt with, maybe, you know, somewhat recently or maybe years ago that's clouding your perception of what you're dealing with right now. So the tapping helps you just sort of let that go too, so that you can just really, it sort of wipes the slate clean in some way so that you can handle whatever you're dealing with without all of the extra emotional baggage that can be blocking your thoughts. You mentioned acupressure points. And for those of us that haven't heard of acupressure, but are familiar with acupuncture, what's the relation between the two? They're pretty similar. I think that um, the acupressure points definitely correspond to some of the points that an acupuncturist would work with. But I'm I'm not exactly sure what the correlation is, but they're both based in, you know, ancient Chinese medicine. So there's definitely a connection. And do you use acupuncture as well or strictly acupressure? I personally just use the acupressure. I have not experienced acupuncture yet. That's something I'd like to do. I came across the idea of EFT in Dawson Church's book, Mind to Matter, and I was blown away by all the litany of different use cases he mentioned for EFT. Also, he backed it up with lots of scientific research and validation through dozens, if not hundreds of studies. What are some of the use cases that you find clients coming to you to help with? I mean, it can be just about anything. And um, often what they think the issue is and what they actually discover the issue is after we go through the tapping process are can be very different things. For example, I had um, a client recently, she came to me and she was like, you know, everything is going really well. Like my life is calm and happy and I, you know, I've never been happier, but I have this um, really bad habit of biting my nails and I've had it since I was a kid and I can't get rid of it. And it's actually gotten worse and I don't know why because everything in life right now is so easy and it doesn't make sense to me. So we started to tap on it and we started just tapping on like how she felt about the fact that she was actually, that she was still biting her nails and, you know, that it was disgusting and why couldn't she stop and, you know, and all of that. And we, what ended up um, coming up for her was that it was connected to a childhood trauma that she had experienced starting around the age of like, 11 or 12. And that's when she started biting her nails, but she never connected the two. And this experience went on for several years and really um, was very significant in her life, which she, she knew, but she thought she had sort of like put it to rest 
And when we tapped on it, she realized that it was still really impacting her um, in so many different ways. And so we tapped on it and she was able to really like let it go. And she has told me since then that she just feels so much lighter that the nail biting um, has decreased significantly and it's really impacted like every area of her life. So that's just one example of something that's sort of seemingly trivial or like, you know, concrete and then, um, but that is connected to something else. And then um, I've also worked with someone recently who is an athlete and she is a triathlete um, and she was highly competitive. She had qualified for the nationals and the like world championships a couple of years ago and then went through a difficult time in her life and suddenly went from training for triathlons to not being able to run a mile or two without like being out of breath and her her whole body shut down she and this was before she and I worked together but so what she had come to realize was that it was a lot of emotional baggage that had just never been dealt with over years and years. And when this situation in her life sort of came to um, a boiling point, her body just said, yeah, okay, we're done. You gotta, you gotta figure this out. And so she had done a lot already, but what she and I worked on was, cause she still doesn't know she's been getting back on track, but she still doesn't know she's not competing yet. And she doesn't know if she's going to be able to. And so much of her identity is wrapped up in being a highly competitive athlete. And so we needed to look at what happens if she can't compete again, what are the emotions that competition brings to her and in, in terms of how she feels about herself and, and what it is that she loves about it. And then if she's not able to compete again, how can she find those experiences elsewhere? And also a lot of the time when you're able to do that, when you take the pressure off yourself, you're able to compete again because it's not like the be all and the end all. Having that pressure valve can be a lifesaver. I know from playing college football and rugby, exactly what she's feeling and going through. And just the idea, the thought of injuring myself so that I couldn't do these things I wanna do induces stress in itself. Yeah, and then it increases the possibility of injury because when we're tense, our body breaks down in whatever way. I mean, that's the thing with EFT. At the end of the day, what it does is it alleviates stress in the body. So that enables your body to function the highest possible level, whether we're talking you know, competing in athletics, whether we're talking about, you know, being the CEO of a company, dealing with challenges in your relationships or with your kids, healing from a disease. I had breast cancer and tapping absolutely helped me get through that. When your body is relaxed, it's able to do more. And then and I don't ever want to say tapping is like the magic bullet because it's not, but if there are other things going on, um, when you relax the body, whatever those issues are sort of rise to the top. So they're much easier to address. Yeah, it's a, a form of power relaxation. A couple of weeks back, I got a little device that I attached to my arm and it measured my blood sugar around the clock. I wore it during a particularly stressful period of my life where I was working 16 hour days and I thought that I had my stress pretty well in check from meditating daily, occasionally practicing EFT. When I got glucose readings back, I was blown away. My glucose was off the charts and I realized how big of an impact stress really has on us. That's a really cool thing to be able to see because we, I think we all know like, you know, stress impacts us, but we don't realize the long-term effects, or even in your case, the short-term effects on all of the body systems. With your client, you mentioned that she had, I mean, I guess they both had emotional or trauma releases. What does that look like? Does it happen in the session, after the session, a couple of days later, or is it individualized? It's individualized, but I would say generally something happened in the session. Sometimes it's very emotional and there are tears and but it doesn't always have to be that way. Sometimes it comes up as like a vivid memory 
sometimes what hap- what will often happen, like for example, with my client who was the nail biter, she when we after we tapped on one or two rounds, she said, I have this image and I just remembered that I came across this photograph of myself recently when I was like nine or 10 years old and my hands were, I could tell that I hadn't started biting my nails yet. And I was like, okay, tell me about who you were in that photo. Like, what do you remember? How do you feel about that child? And so we did all of that. And, and when we tapped on that, that's when she made the connection. And like, that was a a really big realization for her because she experienced bullying and it went on for several years. I was a little concerned. You know, I just said, okay, this is a big deal. I want you to just be aware that you're going to be, you know, you may be emotional and I want you to call me if, if you're having a really hard time. Um, And she didn't need to. And she said, you know, she had some tears and she kind of, she journaled and she, you know, she did all of the self-care things. She said she just felt lighter. Like it wasn't traumatic. I've had experiences personally where I've come to a realization about something and I've just had then like three or four days of a lot of tears and um, not feeling like overwhelmed, but definitely feeling emotional and uncomfortable and like I needed, and I, it's happened to me more than once. So I now know, like, I just need to get, you know, go through the process and just allow myself to release the emotions. But for someone who has experienced really intense trauma, um, I would say that tapping is not a substitute for a mental health professional. Um, A lot of therapists are incorporating it into their therapy because it is so powerful. But for someone that's really experienced significant trauma, they should absolutely work with a therapist who does EFT or have an EFT practitioner who coordinates with the therapist and preferably that the EFT practitioner specializes in trauma. When we do EFT, can we expect to always have an emotional release like that? And what if we don't have the bandwidth to handle a three-day release? You know, generally speaking, I think whatever comes up is going to be something that you're ready to deal with. But that said, in any situation where someone feels like they are having a really hard time, that they should always reach out for help. But I also want to say that it's not always like this. Like sometimes something that comes up is, for example, someone is struggling with public speaking and they have a presentation that they have to do. And public speaking is really just something that completely stresses them out. I mean, and this is a, you know, I think there's been a study that like the majority of people when given a choice between public speaking and being hit by a bus would choose being hit by a bus. So public speaking is a big trigger for a lot of people. And what people will often find is that it was like in fourth grade, I did an oral report and I dropped my papers on the floor and everybody laughed. And then in seventh grade, my partner and I were doing a presentation and the slideshow didn't work and everyone laughed. And there are like multiple experiences that weren't like traumatic in the way that we think of trauma, but were upsetting and sort of like had this little voice in our head saying, oh, I'm not good at public speaking. I'm not good at public speaking. And so when you can, you know, if you tap on that and you recognize it and you neutralize those emotions, and then you think, oh, all right, I can do this. And you go and you you give your presentation and it's not a problem. So there are a lot of things like that where it's like these little experiences over time that add up to this limiting belief in our head that tells us that we like we're not good with money or we're not good at public speaking or we're, you know, we're not a good cook or whatever it is. And when we can kind of identify a couple of those memories and let them go, then the problem sometimes disappears completely or is significantly reduced. Are there best practices on when to use EFT, such as before the stressor, say public speaking, during or after, or ideally all? Yeah, I mean, I am a big advocate for every day because I think the more you do it, the more impact it has. But certainly if you are like giving a presentation and you're just anxious, whether it's that you, you know, if you have a big fear of public speaking and you know that you're going to be doing this presentation a couple of weeks ahead of time, I would say 
start a couple of weeks ahead of time and see if you can kind of uncover some of the reasons for that that fear and hopefully let some of it go. But you know, we all get nervous. And so I've definitely, you know, I've definitely done this. And I think, you know, anyone can do it if you are going, like you're you have to have a difficult conversation with someone and you're really anxious about it. You can tap on it like, you know, before you pick up the phone or before you meet that person for coffee and just do a tapping routine to just kind of relax yourself and be present in your body so that when you have that conversation, you're calmer and you're thinking more clearly and you're not going to be reactive. You're going to be able to say what you need to say, hopefully hear what the other person has to say and think about it in a way that's rational so that you can you know, hopefully resolve whatever the issue is. So absolutely tapping is a great thing in the moment to just kind of calm you down before whatever it is that you need to deal with. Yeah, tapping, breathing, power posing. Yeah. All tools. All Yeah, all of those things are really great tools and they're good because you can do them anywhere. Let's talk about some of the specifics and how a routine looks. You mentioned earlier about downloading the different tracks, hearing the different flavors of practitioners. Mm -hmm. What are the sessions like and do they differ based on your goal? Yeah, I'm going to say they're going to differ based on the goal and it would also probably differ based on the practitioner because obviously everyone has a you know slightly different style. And it also depends on like the length of time that you're working with someone. So if it's a shorter period of time, like six weeks to three months, someone may have a couple of really specific goals that they want to work on. If they're coming to you for a specific goal around learning to you know manage their money better, in which case it would be pretty focused on that. Although again, issues always come up. And so it, it's a winding path. It's definitely not a linear process, but basically the sessions are about an hour. Usually the client comes in and they have something specific that they want to talk about, or, you know, I'll ask like, so how was your week? If it was a first session, I would have done like an intake. So I would have some idea of what was going on. And then um, in a first session, I would just say, okay, so, you know, tell me a little bit more about what's going on. And as the person's talking, I would be taking notes. I would ask them questions, um, you know, to try and get a little bit more information, depending on, on what they told me, I would ask a lot about how are you feeling about that? If they told me about something that had happened or why do you think that, or where do you see this going? things like that. And then once I feel like we have enough information, we'll start tapping and I will use the client's words to mirror back to them. So I will add stuff as well, but the more specific the language is to the, the problem that the client is dealing with, the more powerful the tapping. And so the benefit of working with a practitioner is that we all need someone else to kind of look through a different set of eyes. So I can take all of the information that the client gave me and I might put a spin on it. And so we go through a round or two and we see what, ha like how they feel and what comes up. And sometimes it's a memory, sometimes it's a thought, sometimes it's an image. Um, sometimes it's just, oh, I feel more relaxed. And then we go from there. And so it really depends on the session. Like sometimes the session is a 60 minute session and we'll tap for 45 minutes. Other times we'll tap for 10. It really just depends on where the client is and what they need. That makes the primary benefit of working with an EFT practitioner like yourself over a generic YouTube video that when you work with someone and they customize it to your own life, it becomes far more powerful. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, I mean, I think the recorded videos and audios are wonderful. And they're, I think they're really helpful, especially on a day-to-day -day basis, if you want to just wake up and do like a 10 minute tapping. Um, but I think working with a practitioner is really helpful if you're struggling with something major, but the other, like the beauty of tapping is once you become skilled at it, you can do it yourself and you just talk through the process as you tap and you can, you know, like the way you would tell your friend, um, and you'll start to feel the relaxation and other ideas will come into your head. So 
it's a really great self-help tool and you, you can absolutely do it on your own. I did it on my own for several years before working with a practitioner oh. and I made so much progress on my oh. own. Cool. And when you work with clients, do you customize the points which they tap on themselves or is it the same points with different vocal pairings? It's the same points with different statements. If you're a game, it'd be fun to give my listeners a little mini experience of what it's like. Do you want to do a live tapping session right now on the call? Sure, that would be fun. <laughs> okay, so how do I get started? I'm standing here for those that can't see me. What now? Okay, so, um, and it's definitely a little harder with an audio because it is a, it's a visual thing, but I can, if you want to put in your show notes, I can give you a tutorial where I, like a short video where I just walk people through if they want that visual, but I'll explain all of the points right now before we get started. And then I will call them out as, as we tap. We start on the side of the hand. Um, sometimes people call it the karate chop point. So it's the edge of the hand on the pinky side. You're going to hold one hand vertically, and then you're going to take the fingers of the other hand and just tap on that pinky side of your hand. One thing I haven't known when I've been practicing on this on my own, mm -hmm. how hard am I tapping? That's a really good question. You don't have to tap too hard. You know, you want it like enough that you can kind of feel it, but it doesn't have to be hard at all. Okay, won't do any damage. No, you're not going to do any damage. The next point is the eyebrow point, and that is on the inside of the eyebrow. Some people tap with one hand, some people tap with two. It's a preference. Either mm. way is fine. You want to go to the inside edge of one or both of your eyebrows, so kind of above your nose, but like a little bit off to the left or the right. And then the next point is the side of the eye, which is on your temple. Under the eye is on the edge of your eye socket. Under the nose is between your nose and your upper lip. Your chin or under the mouth is that crease in your chin. And then your collarbone is if you put your whole hand on top of your chest and you kind of take your thumb and your forefinger and you feel the edge of your collarbone and then just put your flat hand on your chest um, and you can just tap with your fingertips, that's your collarbone. I see when you tap, you use your entire hand. Is that necessary or can I use one finger? I would say if you're gonna, if you don't wanna use your whole hand, you can use like two or three fingers. Okay. Like that. And then um, under the arm, so like three inches below your armpit and sort of like halfway between the front and back of your body. Like if, imagine you have a seam on the side of your body and tap on the seam. And then the last point is the top of your head. So like smack in the uh, middle of the top of your head. So you finish on top of your head. You finish on top of your head. If you miss a point, it doesn't matter if you are like a little to the left or the right. It's not a big deal. It, you cannot mess this up. So there's no way to do it wrong. You may have, you know, more or less results if you like miss a point or you don't tap enough or whatever, but you're never, you're always going to have some relaxation and some results and you cannot do any harm. So I think that's really important for people to know. Yeah, it's good to know and not get caught up in the analysis paralysis where I don't know if I'm doing it right, so I'm just not going to do it at all, which admittedly right. I kind of did with the whole like how hard do I tap? Do I use one finger, all my fingers, two hands, one hand? Yeah, you can't do it wrong. And the other thing is like if you just – if you don't have a recording or anything and you don't feel like you know what to say, just tap. The tapping is what releases the stress. So I have, I've definitely had days where I've been feeling really emotional and I didn't want to listen to a recording and I just didn't have it in me to, to like say anything. And I just tap on the points and I have felt better. I do like saying the statements when possible yes. because I feel like using your own voice and saying the statement puts it out there, it becomes like a real tangible thing. And just by hearing your own voice saying it, all of a sudden, I've noticeably feel myself calm down a little bit. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree with you. It also becomes kind of Pavlovian. Like I know for myself at this point, if I just start tapping on the side of my hand, I can feel my stress level go down like almost immediately, which is not to say it's not going to continue to go down as I tap more, but my body just reacts so quickly now because I do it. I've been doing it for so long. I've actually told a number of people about it and how it's like an on-demand way to quiet your nervous system because like you said it's a pavlovian response that once you start tapping then your nervous system says okay i've seen this enough times i can just relax a little bit i know that in a few minutes i'll feel better yeah absolutely it is i mean it's profoundly changed my life and i've seen it change other people's lives as well and it's so thorough in its impact that it it really makes a difference in just who you are as a person have you tried pairing it with anything? I pair it with meditation. Uh -huh. I will also journal. I'll do sort of like a brain dump journal where I'll wake up in the morning and just write down whatever is on my mind and then pull some of those phrases um, and incorporate them into a tapping routine. I also, I would say like, because I'm an EFT practitioner and I'm also a life coach. And so life coaching there's a thought model that a lot of life coaches use and I use it as well. And so I have taken that and meshed it with the tapping because I think tapping just means that I can get my clients there faster. For the people at home that just want to do it themselves, do mm -hmm. you have any tips to make the statements more powerful? Like I noticed in your example that you use like vivid language. Yeah, I would say the the more specific, the better. And to just think of it as, you know, like, what would you tell your friend? Or the, the other thing is sometimes we want to tap on things that we don't want to tell anybody, you know, uh. like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe I did this or, the, you know, whatever it is. Like I definitely done that and thought like, I'm not telling anybody this, <laughs> which of course is not a good thing, but you know, <laughs> we do what we have to do. And so I like really felt like I almost had to force myself just to say whatever it was and tap on it so that I could acknowledge it and start to let it go. And then like release some of the shame around it. So then I could go talk to someone else and just tell them what my experience was and, you know, have them help remind me that, you know, no, I'm not a terrible person. Cause I, you know, yelled at my daughter or, you know, whatever it was, but we all have those situations where, you know, we don't want to tell anybody. And so tapping on those is really helpful too, because I think shame is definitely an issue that we all struggle with in some way, shape or form. And the thing with shame is that we, go into ourselves and we feel like we're the only one and we don't want to tell anybody. And so tapping around something like that can just help release the anxiety enough that you can talk to someone else and kind of let it go or connect with someone else and realize that you're not alone. To go back to your question, I would say speak about it the way you would speak to someone, you would tell someone the story or just like whatever is in your heart, just speak it. And mm. you can, if you can't come up with a sentence, you can just tap on the emotion. So like anger, 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 just keep tapping, go through the points until you start to feel your body relax. And then maybe you can free up your brain to think a little bit more clearly and, you know, and speak in complete sentences. Christine, we're running low on time. I have a few other questions for you. But before I get to that, how can people connect with you and work with you? They can find me at schoolforjoy.com. That's my website. I am on Instagram at schoolforjoy. You can email me at christine at schoolforjoy.com. Perfect. On to the rapid fire round. Okay. Imagine that all of the information and knowledge on earth is gone. You get to save three most meaningful books, podcasts, or informational resources that have either impacted your life or career. Which would you choose? I would choose The Tapping Solution because they, you know, helped me discover tapping. Brene Brown because her work has dramatically changed my life as well. 
And um, my third thing would be Ted Lasso on HBO because I love that show. And I think it's just a really like warm hearted show about being authentic and doing whatever brings you joy and letting other people do the same. What's the best and or worst advice you've ever received? I don't know if it was advice so much as it's just something that I think about a lot. I just remember hearing someone talk about just this idea of faith and that we have to have faith that if we if we want to make the world a better place, sometimes you do things and you don't know if it's having the impact that you want it to have. But you just kind of have to have faith that it it is and that you are helping someone in some small way. So that, and I was a teacher in a former life, so it was a big part of teaching for me. Um, And now with coaching, that's what it is, is that I, you know, you never know the impact that you have on someone's life. And so you just have faith that you are making a difference. I like that. And especially early on in your career, you don't get much feedback until you've compounded, you've put in the 10,000 hours, and then, only then, do you start to hear back from people that your work is changing their life. Right, exactly. We will now end on a lighter note. What is one thing that your tribe does not know about you? <laughs> um, I, I read People Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Christine, it's been a pleasure having you on the show and you've inspired me to dust off the old books and start integrating tapping and Dawson Church's eco meditations back into my daily routine. So thank you for that. So you're welcome. And yeah, you will not regret it. Dawson Church is great. Until next time. Thank you so much. I hope that this has been helpful for you. If you enjoyed it, subscribe and hit the thumbs up. I love knowing who's in the 1% committed to reaching their full potential. Comment 1% below so that I know who you are. For all the resources and links, meet me on my website at mindbodypeak.com. I appreciate you and look forward to connecting with you. As a reminder, the information in this video is for information purposes only. Please consult your primary healthcare professional before making any lifestyle changes.